Loud women. Wow. Anyway, yeah, so you'll probably hear her in the uh, <laughs> in the background. She's talking to her family over in the Philippines. Uh, so you're probably not even going to understand what she's saying, but that's okay. Anyways, good morning and welcome to One Only Farmer. And uh, yeah, we're just going to, you know, maybe I could see I'm blinding you all. I think this hat's better. It's a little lighter. Shows my my face. Uh, but anyway, the uh, <clears throat> the weather is just killing me here. Uh, starting to wonder, like every other hay farmer on the East Coast at this point in uh, Pennsylvania, whether we're going to have uh, the time to get everything done the way we need to get it done. Uh, I've got fertilizer on for a second cut. The second cut is, you know, I mean, this is a little different here for me on the East Coast than it is for a lot of guys out there feeding cattle. Uh, you know, you guys are probably hitting your third cut by now. Um, God, somebody's after me. Yeah, so it's my nephew. He's coming up to the farm. Uh, but anyways, what I'm <laughs> trying to say is that I got fertilizer on for a second cut, and because we've had this heat and rain, uh, cool nights, though. I mean, it's pretty nice, but a lot of rain and uh that grass is growing like a son of a bitch and when i say a son of a bitch i mean it's growing like gangbusters so what i would normally have in say september i've got it already here in august and uh every acre that i have cut so far has got to be cut again and for the last three weeks i've had nothing but rain uh we've had like uh, in be intermittent rain. I know the guys that were getting their wheat off, they were struggling to get the last of the weed off uh, and the oats. I know there's a neighbor, cousin of mine, he got his oats off and, you know, so he did. they did get it off, but it wasn't enough time to cut this massive amount of hay that I have, spread it out and get it dried out. It was, it's like three days of dry weather. Uh, so you got to wait a day for the ground to dry out enough to, to support the machines and then uh, then I would only have like two days to two days to get this shit dried out in a bale stacked and covered because of this massive amount of rain that we've been getting. Uh, it's kind of it's been quite a challenge. Now I can't say that we've had uh, massive amounts of rain like they have 50 miles to our west. I know out in uh, Lancaster County, central and northwestern Pennsylvania, it has been an absolute deluge of rain so anybody that's trying to make hay out there is in the same boat that i am if not worse um i mean the plus side is i have worked on lots of equipment i mean the baler yesterday we finished up putting new pickup tines in the baler i'm gonna pull the baler back into the shop here in uh, probably a little later today i got the tether in there now um, but i'm gonna pull the baler back into the shop uh, i got some bill hooks that i would like to replace on it uh, I have them. I d just purchased them. If you watch my see my Instagram account, you'd see that I had a I had a bill hook in my story there. It's probably gone now, but uh, you know. So I got six new bill hooks. I don't know why they sent me complete new bill hooks. I only wanted the the little tongue itself. And, but you know, um, what was her name? Barb. Barbara. Barbara gave me the wrong parts, and it cost me about ten times what it should have. I had, you know, but whatever. It's okay. Barbara at Messick's, if you're watching this, uh, shame on you. You didn't listen to me. But it's okay. I can, it's easier to change it this way than it would be the other way anyway. So, you know, thanks anyway. It's good. It's all good. Um, $1,500 later for those parts. But, you know, everything anymore is getting so god-awful expensive. It doesn't matter what color machine you have, what brand of machine you have. Uh, just everything has gone off the reservation when it, when, it, uh, when it comes to these parts for these pieces of equipment. I mean, even the equipment's off the charts. Uh, Ten years ago, I could buy a baler for around, you know, $100,000. Uh, Eighty to $100,000. Now, today, you can't touch them for... 200 they're right around two hundred thousand dollars so they double in price of course the productivity of them double um you know so you they double in price the productivity of them double in price but the parts double in price also so where are you at uh the problem is the hay hasn't doubled in price and that's where i would like to see a little more money on the hay side of it uh, i was contacted by a fellow in norway to ship hay to norway 
and all of a sudden uh, he stopped calling. I would like to contact him again and let him know what the deal is. I should actually just send him an email. Uh, we have been put into a quarantine, into quarantine in Hunterdon County uh, for goods being, uh, natural goods being shipped outside the country. We're kind of fucked there. Uh, we have what they call the spotted lantern fly, and the spotted lantern fly is supposed to be in this area. I have never seen one. Uh, I think I would know what they look like, but if you don't know what they look like, you can look them up online. Google the spotted lantern fly and what it does to trees. It kills trees, it kills all trees. I don't know what's so wonderful about it, whether the larva goes under the bark, it's like a cambium layer eater or some damn thing. I'm not even sure. But uh, yeah, so. And they probably thrive in damp weather, damp hot weather. I mean, it is subtropical weather out there right now. Uh, last night between 3.30 and 6, it just deluges. I don't know how much rain we had, but I'm sure in the next 20 minutes my dad will be calling me and saying, hey, uh, we had like a million inches of rain last night, but you know, what am I supposed to do? Uh, I can't, I don't have anything mowed and laying on the ground. I know there's some guys out there that's got a lot of hay mowed, laying on the ground. They didn't expect this weather pattern to stick with us for two weeks. These are mulch guys also. Uh, about four days ago, I said, screw it, I'm going to go mow hay, and then my better judgment took over, and I'm glad that I didn't, um, you know, because it just, it would just be devastating. Uh, you know, it's mulch hay, it can get rained on, it's fine. One or two showers is fine. If it lays out in the field more than a week, I'm telling you, if it lays out in the field more than a week, you just start to lose it. It just goes away. Uh, the, the, the decaying process takes over. So first shower takes the wax off. I mean, first rain, you can get an inch of rain on hay. It's fine. It isn't going to hurt it as far as mulch hay is concerned. Now, cattle quality, hay, yeah, it's going to hurt it. Um, but you get an inch of rain on it sits out there you ted it out and it gets brown and sun bleached and that's perfect for mulch hay because the wax is off of the hay um second rainstorm yeah now it starts to get into the interior of the plant and the microbes start to take over and it starts to break down uh if you hit it with a tedder again you start to break it up into little pieces like that and then the rake leaves them go and then if you let it out there for more than a week by the time that baler hits it it breaks up into dust you know the dust that's flying off the back of those balers hay rakes tedders and stuff that is actually a particles flying away that's money going away so you know i've got literally 37 hundred acres of hay to make still as of today 3700 acres of hay to make i have only made approximately a thousand acres yeah approximately a thousand acres so whew, i still got fertilizer in the tanks so when i do get this hay off the first hay that i take off in the next couple of in the next week i'm hoping that we have a break in the weather where's my phone i'm hoping we have a break in the weather but uh let me text my nephew back here. Uh, just give him the okay. Um, yeah, he's he just got back from two-week vacation. He went to Maine with his family. So Grant hasn't been around. Um, Joseph, he went off the reservation yesterday. And if you don't know what off the reservation is, it's it just means he went a little bit nuts. But uh, Joseph did. He, he was pissed off because he hasn't gained patience with his age. And he needs some patience. But, okay, so, today, we got rain today, Saturday's rain, Sunday's sunny, Monday, very hot, 90 degrees, That's what we're, but dry, hot and dry, which is good. Um, then we get Tuesday, Wednesday, at 40%, and then Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I might, I don't know what our, cloudy with showers in the morning, then partly sunny with slight chance of showers in the afternoon, highs in the mid-80s, southwest winds around 5 miles an hour, becoming west in the afternoon chance of rain 90 percent uh yeah patchy fog in the morning this is for tomorrow sunny with highs around 90 and a light variable winds becoming west five miles an hour in the afternoon so we're looking at 88 degrees for sunday 90 degrees 90 degrees for monday mostly sunny hot with highs in the lower 90 southwest winds and five mile an hour heat index values in the upper 90s 
So, yes, and I'm partly sunny with a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Highs in the upper 80s. Chance of rain is 40%. Um, I'm at that point now that if I have two days of 40% chance of rain, I'm going to mow hay today. I'm just going to knock it down. I've, I can probably knock down 100 acres, 200 acres, one or 200 acres today with two machines or three machines running. I've got all three mowers are tip-top shape, ready to rock and roll. Uh, every All the blades are chain sharpened in them. Chain sharpened, greased. Oils checked, fuels full, both of the self-propelled, the case windrower is good to go. Uh, whatever, how long ago it was that that, when did I do that video on the self-propelled windrower? Because it's, uh, that's when it started to rain. And I know that was in July. Obviously it was in July. Let, let me go home here and I can find my videos. Let's say we find, oh God, Wesley, what are you doing? So let me go to Creator Studio. That'll give me the date. Um, so uh, uh, video manager. I've done a lot of stuff in the last few weeks. So we got okay. So July twenty fourth. We had rain before July twenty fourth. We had rain. We started rain. Bailing to beat the rain was on July 19th. July 20th, I did since July 20th, which is today, the 4th. So we've got 14 days. We've got two full weeks of rain that we've had to deal with. So, damn. Uh, rained, just rain. I know you guys in the southwest and even up in Wyoming in that area, you guys are dry as a bone. Um, I do not have that weather. Uh, we were getting into that area, you know, but right now everything's a jungle. It's a jungle. The weeds in the woods are even growing, you know. Normally this time of year the weeds in the woods start to die back. And I say weeds in the woods. We don't usually get weeds in the woods, but the woods is full of weeds. Weeds. Not just the ferns. The ferns, they love this kind of weather. They're growing like mothers. Um, I sprayed the fence lines. Uh, in the on the farm with Roundup and uh, you know just to beat them back and uh, they're growing so vigorously that the Roundup has barely phased them the grass died because that's you know the foxtail that's easy to kill but some of those broadleaf weeds they're they're eating it they're taking it so I'm gonna have to hit them again but uh, yeah so that's just the update uh, I want to make some little idiot blocks uh, had a guy ask me if I could make idiot blocks for him, and I asked him how many he needed. He says, as many as I can make. I said, 5,000 bales. He said, sure, no problem. Uh, he's going to give me, I think he says he's going to give me 550 a bale for them if they're made right, which I can make good hay. So maybe I'll go to 10,000 bales. You know, that'd be about, you know, what the hell, $55,000. That'd do it. I could be okay with that. Put my boys to work. Get some pounds off their asses. They look like they're gaining weight. So, and they hate little bales. So I guess today, I got I got tires. I got some tires. I, you know the little the little bale wagons need some help on their tires. So uh, I got tire jacked for the for the good uh, implement tires, and I got some new tires for the ones that are shredded up and dry rotted. So maybe that's what I'll do today. After I get that tether and the and the bale are done, the tether's just gotta have the just gotta be greased and new tines put on it. I bought ten tines for each. I think ten, maybe twenty of each. I can't even remember. Ten of each. I probably should have bought twenty of each for this friggin' thing um, because it just eats them. It eats them. You you will go through tether tines with this thing, and I know a lot of guys are like, oh well, you don't have it set up right. I never break tether tines. Well. When you do thousands of acres in a year with a tether, you will go through the tether tines. They break heavy hay. You know, if you go out and you're doing second cut, I'll never break a tine in second cut. Never, ever break a tine in second cut. First cutting? Fuck yeah, man. I can put brand new tines on there and uh, every old one on it will break. Every old one. And then replace those and then the new ones start to break. You know, it's like, what the hell? Because there's so much flex in it. It has nothing to do with hitting the ground because I don't touch the ground. I'm usually about an inch off the ground. Unless it's plastered to the ground. When it's plastered to the ground, you got to pick that hay up off the ground after getting rained on like twice. Then it's a nightmare. Then it, then it just snaps them off. But uh, yeah, it's all in the stress. The amount of hay that's going through the machine is what dictates how it breaks off. But anyhow, you know, 
I don't know. Hopefully everybody out here is, you know, in good shape that's watching watching this channel as far as their hay in their barns and I know they're not. Uh, I know the corn and the soybeans. There's there's guys to our west that their bean their corn and beans drowned, washed away off the map. Uh, you know, I was told that the guy across the river, he had uh, major flooding. I don't watch his channel. Um, I haven't heard anything. I did see him on the other channel, on the uh, Ag Talk and the Raw channel, um, that he had talked to one of his little weirdo followers that comes and trashes me on my channel. And it's funny about that guy, too, because he'll be like, oh, you talk on the phone while... You, you make videos while driving a semi down the road. You need to go to jail for that. And then uh, another guy points out the fact that his, his buddy across the river there does the same exact thing. Not driving a semi, I mean, but my phone is in a holder. You know, it's hands-free when it's glued to my, my dashboard. And it is, it's glued to the dashboard. It's hands-free. I was just holding, I was just holding the, 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 the holder, not the device, the holder, so that it wouldn't rattle so much. So... I was still on hands-free, so just to inform the uninformed that complain about the things that I do in this world, uh, it's it was a hands-free device because it was in the holder, and I guess I could take a picture of it and send it out on Snapchat so that anybody that watches my Snap or not Snapchat uh, in uh, Instagram, I don't do Snapchat too much. I do look at it from time to time. Uh, it's a great stalker site. You can tell where everybody is in the world that does Snapchat, but for the most part, Instagram is is where I'm at, you know, on most days. You'll see me there a lot. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, I, you know, and I feel bad for the guy across the river. I mean, he had a fire, which sucks. You know, nobody wants to burn up, have their crop burn up, and that's got to hurt. I mean, he's got to be hurting for after that. And then, you know, and then to have your corn and beans and tobacco wash away. I mean, you know, my differences with that guy are just differences. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't hate the man. Uh, I dislike some of the things that he does online, but I don't hate the man, and I certainly don't want to see his crops wash away. I mean, it sucks when somebody goes through that. And crop insurance, crop insurance does not pay what everybody thinks, every non-agriculture or every non-recipient uh, of it. I mean, there's people that pay crop insurance their entire lives and never, ever receive a dollar. But I've received money from crop insurance. It's a help, but it isn't. It isn't a living. You can't you can't make a living on crop insurance. It just doesn't work that way. So, I mean, sometimes I think that he deserved it, but then reality strikes, and he's a human being just like me, and he's doing the same types of things. Well, he's not doing the same types of things that I do, but he's a farmer, and nobody likes to see their fellow farmer, you know, go through hardships and hard times like that. You know, he just... You know, you feel bad for him, uh, and I did. I really, I didn't look at it. I just heard about it uh, from several different sources that are just like, "Oh yeah," and they're laughing at him. And I, I didn't laugh at him. I didn't think it was. I, I thought, did I laugh at him? At first, I kind of did, I guess. You know, and I'm just being honest here, because you know, sometimes I just don't like what he does, and I don't like his trolls that come over. And sometimes I think he is the trolls that come over. You know, for the most part. I think he does have some false accounts where he likes to cause trouble. It just seems to be his M.O. But as a farmer, looking at another farmer's crops wash away, uh, you know, I feel bad for him. So, But anyways, that's enough about him. And you know what? I'm going to get going because I do have work to do. i got to get hay wagons ready to go for idiot blocks, and i got to go mow hay. Waiting for it to rain some more. But we've only got 40% chances for two days out of the next eight. So... I'm going to risk it. I'm going to risk it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. And tomorrow you get to see what the shenanigans I did today are. Thanks. Goodbye.